right, folks, welcome to another edition here of Krantz's Corner. And it's going to be a fun one for the next 20 minutes or so, because let me tell you, Doug Plagans, who is a frequent uh, Krantz's Corner uh, kind of contributor, as you could say, uh, he is going through an awesome kind of 18-month period right now. And we are also, as Florida Panther fans, Doug's right in the action every single night calling it the radio voice, play-by-play. -play. You can hear him on WQAM and all throughout the state of Florida, all throughout the country. And he gave you the sneak of what to do if you're watching TV and you still want to listen to him. It's something we went over uh, for a long period of time, uh, about a year or so ago, or whatever the case is. Doug, welcome back to Crancis Corner, first and foremost. And man, you got to be having a fun time right now. It's been a lot of fun. And thanks for having me as always. And if we want to do a little refresher course before we do put it. this episode to bed, we, we can go over those facts again at the end of this. But again, That's thanks right. so much for having me. It's been a ton of fun. No, and let me let me tell you something. Whether you're in the booth in that in that in the arena, whether you're at home watching on TV, this is the best product we have here in South Florida. It is. There's a lot of good things to do sports wise here in South Florida. The Florida Panthers, if you've seen what's happened to that arena. In the last, I would just say, if you went through a montage of the last 10 years of how you could see it growing, see the crowd growing, see the, the arena getting filled up, and now with playoff hockey every year and really good, really good hockey being played by this Florida Panthers team right now, it is so much fun. Uh, I'll start with this, because I know that you have the pulse of the locker room. You're with the guys all the time on the road. How much did this win mean to this team to get rid of Tampa Bay, to knock them out? I think the last three times they played in the playoffs, Tampa Bay won all three of those series. This to win and at home, this had a, this was a special one for this team. I know it's only round one. There's plenty of work still to go, but to celebrate what's happened so far in this playoff series. Well, any playoff win is is special, and any playoff win is a, a big box to check. So now, as you said, the Panthers, it was only one round, but it was a big one there. It was a rivalry matchup. Everybody knows it. Before the series started, There and there's a ton. I know there's a rivalry. I know things get, uh, get heated out there between those two teams at times when the Panthers play the Lightning. That's why it's not just us here in Florida, but people across – North America stop what they're doing when the Panthers and the Lightning play. And it's been that way for a few years now because both teams are contenders at the same time. They play each other a lot. They're familiar with each other. And there's that rivalry tension that goes along with it. But there's a huge respect between the two teams as well. And both know how good the opponent on the other side is. And Aaron Ekblad told us uh, during a media availability right before the series was about to start that, uh, you know, the Lightning last few years, they they have been the benchmark for success in the NHL. Uh, they went to the cup final three straight years. They won two cups. They had a president's trophy. And this isn't just something that's been recent. People forget about the fact that they went to a cup final back in 2015 and then kind of took a step back and retooled a little bit. John Cooper's been there the whole time. Steven Stamkos has been there the whole time. They've got the cornerstone guys like Kucherov and Hedman and the goaltender Andre Vasilevsky. So it's a it's a really capable opponent over there. And if you look at the last 41 games of the regular season, the Panthers and the Lightning had very similar records. Tampa Bay was kind of getting stronger as the season went on and had to grind it out and separate themselves from, from the rest of the pack to secure their playoff spot. They weren't your typical wild card team plain and simple. Usually when you win your division, you have a better reward than playing a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning, like that version of the Tampa Bay Lightning first round. So again, there for a lot of different reasons, that was an important one. But if I'm just sitting here looking at it from a broad scope, obviously getting past the Lightning was important. That was an obstacle that the Panthers hadn't, hadn't conquered yet. Getting past Andre Vasilevsky almost specifically was, was a, an obstacle that they hadn't conquered yet. And if you look at it, I mean, hats off to what he's been able to do. He's played something like 112, 13 playoff games in his career. Wow. And his his playoff save percentage and goals against average are better than his regular season goals against average and save percentage. So, I mean, he's a guy on a, on a Hall of Fame track, much like Sergei Bobrovsky is. That was a heck of a goaltending matchup. So to be able to get by him, that's important. But just looking at the overall situation, there was a lot riding on getting that thing done in sunrise right. in game five. First of all, you have the 19,750 who are on hand. So to be able to clinch that series on home ice, do it for the fans, the fans deserve it, number one. That was great to see. Also, just looking at the situation, 
The Boston Bruins are going to have an opportunity to close out the Toronto Maple Leafs in five games. The way that series has gone, looks like Boston has the Leafs number. There's been a lot of noise around the Toronto Maple Leafs. If the Bruins get that series done, yeah, they're going to be traveling to start the series. That series would start in sunrise. But you want to try to stay on a similar rest schedule to the opponent that you're going to play. So you didn't want to let that series drag out any longer than it did. And there was importance in getting that done in Game 5 because... Plain and simple, the last thing you want to do is to give that Tampa Bay Lightning right. team with that championship pedigree any idea that the door might be the slightest bit open. So, again, to get that done in five, to not let them start to think, okay, let's just get this to seven. You didn't want Tampa Bay to start to feel comfortable at all. So getting that done when they did, the Panthers, uh, that was something they had to do. There was incentive to finishing that series out, and they were able to go out and do it in game five. Yeah, you don't want to give a team, you're up 3-1. You don't want to go 3-2 and give them any life, any confidence at that point. Good teams don't let that happen. The Panthers proved they are a good team. This was not a fluke kind of year last year. They are built to win at this point. And you know what? We saw that, me and you talk about all different kind of sports all the time. A good example of this is the Bulls in the, in the late 80s. Uh, they had to lose a lot before they could actually get there. They had to get close to the finals and lose to the Pistons a couple times before it was their turn. That it almost feels like with the Panthers, they got to the Stanley Cup finals last year. They tasted it. It was in their hand, taken from them. And then this year it was like, all right, we know how to get there. We know what we need to do to get there. Put any obstacle in our way. Tampa Bay, possibly Boston, whatever the case may be. They're built to win. This is no fluky team. And obviously, me and you have had long discussions about Bill Zito and his time here so far and what he's done to this team and this franchise really turned it around for the better and for the long run with young guys and really good players in general. Um, they're built. This is it. They're they're a playoff team. That's and that's I think that's what we've always wanted down here in South Florida is every year in the playoffs, every year a contender. And they've gotten there and they're in the midst of it right now. You brought up Big Bob before. Um he had a hell of a series. I mean, he had, he's been, forget the series. He's in the beginning when he got here, there were some up and downs and he was getting used to it. He has proven. And if you're a hockey fan, a semi fan or a all, all day, all night hockey fan, you've seen big Bob just in this last series, really show what he's got. How much fun was that watching him in the net? Yeah. There were some times where whatever was happening was happening. There were also other times there where we're talking about not just sports center highlights, but like NHL top of the night highlights that were just unbelievable. Big Bob's been great. Well, the save that he made in game two, oh. and Bill Lindsay has pointed to this multiple times, but the deeper the Panthers go in the playoffs, we're going to see that save more and more. Yep. And we're going to talk about it more and more because uh, that plain and simple, we're just talking about that particular instance, that that highlight made it on to places that don't even usually show sports, much less hockey. It right. was that unbelievable of a display of acrobatics and gymnastics in the goal crease to make that save. But considering it was a playoff game, it was a tie game at the time. I mean, if that puck goes in the net, this we, there could still be a series going right. on right now. Right. I mean, it's, the, it's entirely possible. It was that big of a turning point. Um, and it was it was uh, it was really just a, a big point, not only in that game, but in the series. But Sergei Bobrovsky went on this run that really just got going last spring, carried it right through the regular season, just got the Vesna nomination uh, yesterday. So big congratulations to him there. He's one of the three finalists for the Vesna trophy. So uh, certainly he's won the award twice and, and great to see him get the, the nomination again. But he's just been so in command of the position every single night and so consistent. And he and Anthony Stolarz, Panthers backup goaltender, who also had an outstanding season, the two of them really just fed off each other and had a great relationship. And you could tell uh, just night to night, the confidence that the whole team had in both of those guys, knowing that they were going to have a chance to win every night because they were going to get, you know, top-notch goaltending every single night. That You, you can't put a price on that. And for what uh, what they were able to provide this team, all season long has just been nothing short of spectacular. But uh, Sergei Bobrovsky in that series in full command, he made the highlight reel saves, made the routine saves, obviously, when he needed to. And he was uh, instrumental in helping the Panthers get past that first round opponent, the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, oh, it's Sergei been so much fun. Doug, it's been so much fun to watch and listen to you and the calls and how much fun this is for the fans down here also. It'd be, it'd be great if he could make that run again. And let me tell you, 
some of the magic potion I've seen for this team so far, not just in the playoffs, but towards the end of the regular season, has been strong starts to games. It's one thing that we talked about. Uh, me and you, I think, even brought this up last year before the playoffs started, how important it is for this Panthers team to not come out flat in these games, but to come out quick, come out fast, come out strong, come out physical. And it seems like in this first period, in this entire series so far, and even through the last you know two, three, four weeks of the regular season, that's kind of been the magic potion a little bit. I'm sure it is for all the teams to come out quick like that, but for the Panthers to come out and do that, and then they play some great defense, like this has been it. This has been kind of the, the magic pill for this team so far. Well, looking at the, I guess, from the from the broadest view, a huge credit to Bill Zito and the Hockey Operations Department because they've assembled one of the deepest rosters in the yes. National Hockey League. And we've seen that this season, and Paul Maurice has said it, the Panthers right now are deeper than they were at this time last year. And last year, that was a team that got to the cup final. Now, we saw last year once they got to the cup final and then after the cup final was over, when we heard about what some of these guys were playing through down the stretch. And, you know, there were certain injuries that were keeping guys out of the lineup here and there. And the Panthers had to go pretty far down their organizational depth chart last year. So now they're going in an even deeper club. So that uh, that's already come in handy. Sam Bennett's missed a couple of games and you know Ryan Lomberg's been out with the illness there for uh, for a little bit during the Tampa Bay series, but when you can, you know, slot guys up and down the lineup, you can plug in a guy like Stephen Lawrence who at the time had played he played 16 playoff games before in his career. This right. wasn't a situation he'd never been in. Kyle Oposo came in at the deadline from Buffalo and he played over a thousand games in his NHL career. He'd been a captain for a long time. It had been a while since he'd been in the playoffs, but when you can bring in a guy like that who knows his way around the rink, you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be able to have a guy that can come in and, and fill the hole necessary and, uh, and bring that experience and be a calming presence to the lineup. And he played a few great games uh, coming in when, uh, when his number was called. So it's a deep team. They're, they're one of the deepest teams in the league. It's shown throughout the regular season. I always stress that I stress this. I talk about it every year. People get, people get so caught up in who's on the opening night roster and, and being on the opening night roster is special. I understand that, but if you're going to have a successful 82 game season and then go on a deep playoff run, you're going to need a lot more than just those 20 actives hmm. on opening night. It's, it's a, it's a physical game. The same would be true for any sport out there. You're going to need to go much deeper down your depth chart than what you've got there on opening night. And this Panthers team's been assembled just brilliantly and they defend well. They're deep up front. They've got speed on every line. The goaltending has been consistent. Um, they really have everything that you need to be successful. Now, uh, looking at the way things are, are starting to play out here, if it ends up being, well, the Rangers have already punched their ticket and the Panthers have already secured their spot in the second round. The Panthers will have the winner of Toronto, Boston. Right now, uh, Boston has Toronto on the brink of elimination there. And Carolina just needs one more win uh, to move on in their series. If that ends up being the final four in the East, they're all heavyweights. They're all capable of winning a cup. And that's how this was supposed to be. Those were the four best teams in the regular season in the conference. And it's shaping up that those could be the four best teams standing. And uh, and if you're the Panthers, that's that's what you want. You just want to have a seat at that table, right. get to the next round, take it from there. That's it. That's exactly, it's exactly what you want at that point. All right, one more, and I'm going to let you go before I let you give everyone the cheat code of how to watch and listen at the same time. Uh we talked about the depth on this team, Bill Zito putting this team together. Paul Maurice has made a lot of great moves, right? The right moves, moving guys around, changing lines when need be. This might work better with this. Let's let's strengthen this by adding this and take it. He's done a great job. I mean, Paul Maurice walked – we said this too a million times, me and you. Paul Maurice walked into this entire situation, and it was a crazy situation to walk into. He has made such a good – He's done such a good job maneuvering these pieces around on this chessboard. I mean, how is he not up there at the top of the list when you talk about coaches in this league? He better be in every conversation right now, especially looking at what he's done in his last season and a half, season and three quarters at this point. If you talk to anybody in, in hockey circles, there's a real appreciation for what he's been able to do. And and when he came in, I mean, there was, there was a learning process. Right. And there was really a process of kind of, changing the the dna of the team a little bit early in his first season to get things going a different way and once that game once that style of play clicked 
and they found the game that they can replicate night after night, we've seen the positive results. The, the proof is there that, that the system is working. Paul Maurice has done a, a heck of a job with this team going back to going back to last year. And again, to follow up an appearance in the cup final with a 52 win season this year and a division title. And, and of course, we're all keeping our fingers crossed for even more here. It's been something special to see. And when I look at what separates the best of the best during the regular season. Oh, regular season is the regular season. The playoffs are the playoffs. And scheduling is going to play a factor right. and things like that. But scheduling and health, of course. But when you look at teams during the regular season, the two things I always look at are can you win on the road? Because in the NHL, the road team doesn't get that last change. So, for example, if you're the Panthers on the road, you're not always going to have the opportunity to get – Barkov out there against who you want him out there against or or something like that. You might not always have a chance to get the Ekblad and Forsling defense pair out against their top line, things like that. So if you can win consistently on the road, says that you're not overly matchup reliant, which tells me that you're a pretty deep team. And if you can win on the road, you can win at home. Right. And five on five goal differential. Let's look at it. For example, the Panthers this season were a, were a plus five-on-five five goal differential team. They were dramatically on the plus side of things. Tampa Bay was a minus five-on-five five goal differential wow. team this year, They, which tells me that if if you're a playoff team but you were a minus at five-on-five, five, it means that you really relied on the power play. If you're plus at five-on-five, five, it means you found ways to win games right. even if you weren't getting the power plays. If you do get the power plays, great. You're probably going to have success. You clearly have the personnel to be able to do that. But if you have a good five-on-five -five goal differential, which, which the Panthers did, and you can win on the road, they won 26 home games and 26 road games. That tells me that you have what it takes. You've got the makings of a team that can make a deep run. All right. Tell everyone how to cheat, by the way, to put the TV on mute and listen to you. It's one of my favorite things you do here. Yeah, if you go to uh, if you watch the national telecast because it's all national telecasts from uh, from this point forward right. now that we're going to be heading into round two. If you uh, so desire to have the audio of our exclusive local radio broadcast, the only local broadcast you can get of uh, of the Panthers this point forward in the Stanley Cup playoffs, pause your TV at a whistle, and then press play on your TV when you hear that same whistle on the radio, and uh, you will have it totally synced up. Um, I usually try to make a good effort to clearly say when the face-off happens to start a period. So that's another thing that people might be able to use to try and try and time it out. But the old uh, trick with the whistle is usually the, the best way to go about it. So again, hear a whistle on your TV, hit pause. And then when you hear that same whistle on the radio broadcast, hit play on your TV and you'll have it all synced up. My favorite radio cheat code. Doug Plagans gives it out here every time he's on with us, and I absolutely love that. Doug, have a great call for the second round. Fingers are crossed. Hopefully I talk to you a whole bunch more as these playoffs go on and get to that Stanley Cup uh, final once again. That would be magical. What, what a great time this would be here in South Florida. But have a good time while you're doing it. Uh, and this is so much fun to watch. As a fan, as a media guy, this Panthers team really does have a, a bright, shining star here in South Florida. We love having it. And I love having you on Cranston's Corner. We'll do it again soon, I promise. Absolutely. Anytime. Just give me a shout uh, whenever you need a guest. But thanks again for having me on. You're the best. That's Doug Plagans, radio play-by-play -play voice of the Florida Panthers. You can hear it on QAM and all throughout South Florida and the world as well. And follow that cheat code. This has been a special playoff edition of Cranston's Corner, Florida Panther style. Thank you.